Hello and welcome to the Winning Agenda's coverage of another Reddit Twilight Struggle League match. My name's Jesse Marshall, and I'm here with a game of USA. USA. Uh, one, two, three, four. So we're going to try and score Europe this turn, um, and we are going to score Middle East in the headline phase. So we're only going to put two in Iran, even though it causes us issues for moving into Asia. Um, potentially. But if we can get Europe and the Middle East scored this turn profitably, then that sets us on a good path to moving through the early war in reasonable shape. So we're going to have to hope... Oh, that's hot tea. I have to hope our opponent doesn't interrupt Europe, but it looks like they have with socialist governments, so that's annoying. So this is going to mean we're going to have to use some of our, I must say, reasonable ops... Um, to try and interrupt things. We could have, rather than headline in the Middle East, um, headline duck and cover, but really doesn't do too much for us considering we can just get cooed out. Thankfully, our opponent rolled very poorly. And we might just be able to repair things here with a little bit of luck. So we're going to overprotect Italy and we're going to spread into Afghanistan. Um... Yes, so we'll hold. Unfortunately, we're going to have to discard a good card to blockade, which is a little frustrating. Uh, so it's going to probably have to be discard duck and cover or containment. The other option is we can play containment and hold blockade to next turn, especially with red scare out of the deck, considering our hand is reasonably good in terms of the other cards we have. With socialist governments out of the way, there is still De Gaulle and Suez that we could run into. Our opponent's playing reasonably aggressively, but thankfully for us, we have a four up to respond here. And we can prioritize Europe, putting ourselves in a position to dominate and still having access to Pakistan here if they want to move in there. Uh, although obviously us cooing is not ideal. Sorry, us moving in is not ideal as well because we can get cooed out. But they've gone for space, fair enough, and failed, which is huge for us because now we can space Fidel at some point in this turn with minimal risk. And for now, we can just go ahead and score Europe. I think that's probably priority number one for us. Spreading to Malaysia and then to Thailand is good, but I think I'm happy to reduce DEFCON before we do that. We could move into Iraq this action round, but I think I'm happy to just move up to plus nine here. That's pretty good. We may look to coup Iraq um, or even coup North Korea. Like it's possible that cooing North Korea is actually correct here. As we, I don't think I've ever done that on turn one, but given that we have an amazing hand in terms of ops and also um, the space in terms of scoring cards having already been played that could be the correct play we've already banked an op in Afghanistan to have some presence in that region it may just be better to move to Malaysia but I also don't want to give them the opportunity to you know play hyper aggressive for example and just coup Malaysia with the China card if we were to place one up in there. I do want to both get mill ops and reduce DEFCON. So they did have Suez Crisis, which means that I'm very glad I played the scoring card for Europe earlier. So we've got two plays here. The other option is we can event containment, space blockade, play Fidel and realign with three ops, but I think that's probably worse for us. So they may have Asia scoring. Um, but do we coup North Korea? It's an interesting question. If we roll very well, it could be a huge play. You know what? I'm just going to give it a go. I think we're going to do it with duck and cover. Although duck and covering the following action round when they think we have no good coups might also be good if they don't coup us here. So I'm going to coup with containment. I'm just going to 
Give it a bell. Well, there you go. It's a pretty good roll. And now if they refill North Korea, we can move into Malaysia or move into Pakistan. Um, or we can just play the duck and cover for the event to bag some more VPs and then space Fidel. And if we do that, we could end up on 14 VPs at the end of the turn. So played the war, moved into Pakistan. Okay. Um, tempting to think about going into North Korea here, isn't it? I know it's like they're signaling Asia scoring pretty hard. We could still defray that, or we could pre protect Iran a little by playing duck and cover here for the event and hope that they don't have the scoring card. So what are our options in terms of actually closing down domination this action round? We could, we can, we can't make the aggressive play into Malaysia and into North Korea, I don't think, in the one action round. So we can go one to Philippines and two into North Korea. That's an option. And then if they don't respond, say they play the scoring card, then I think we're happy to give them Fidel in order to take North Korea, but I doubt they'll allow us to do that. It does mean then that if they take another country, we have to be able to, say they play the China card or a four up into North Korea, um, we have to be able to take a country as well, which we can do with Fidel as well. I think it's probably worth playing Fidel and giving the opportunity to go to space, although I'm not sure about that, in order to stop them having an action round where they've got domination in Asia. But I think I do like this play. It does leave Iran cooable, but it's not really possible for them to coup with North Korea dangling in such a way. So, let's see what they elect to do. I mean, things aren't ideal for us if we don't reduce DEFCON this turn, but the fact that we don't have any influence in an Asian two stability battleground is also okay. The fact that we haven't raced to Thailand is not great if they draw decal, but if they don't draw decal, or if we manage to get both decal, decal and D-style, then we can try and deny them Thailand. And we've caused them some problems in North Korea, which hopefully we can also recur as we go into the mid-war. And we draw the China card on turn one, which is not too bad. I feel like they've drawn Fidel and they've denied us the opportunity to space, but uh, we, although we can still space here and leave them with the headline Asia scoring opportunity. Um, yeah, I think I don't mind that. Let's go to space. Well, we got Asia scoring. Um, but we got decal. They could still have D style. But we don't have any good cards to discard to blockade again, which is a little annoying. But the fact that we're incentivized here to play the China card makes that a little better because we can just hold blockade again. Although it does start to get risky if we hold it over to turn three. In terms of headlines, um, yeah, they're all pretty bad. Korean War is kind of almost the play, like just that we want to get it out of the way, but that's very risky because it does give them the opportunity AR1. Although, if they go ahead and fill up South Korea, we could coup Pakistan. So I don't know about that. Um, yeah, none of our headlines are very attractive here. We could headline captured Nazi scientist just because, but we'd probably rather event it when we're on the better spot for space. So when we're on a 50% rather than a 66% spot. But maybe that's being a bit greedy to try and play so cute with the space race as well as try and force a positive age of scoring here. Truman Doctrine, we just don't want to event at the moment. 
Cambridge Five, we can't afford to headline. Decoy, we obviously won't. And Asia scoring, we obviously won't. Korean War, I think, is too risky. So let's just go with CNS. Hmm. Okay. So do they spread here? We've got the China card. They probably have to coup, but they win the race to Thailand. So they do coup. They will win the race to Thailand. They also roll well on the coup. Um, sure, we'll bolster France. Um, so this is becoming a little bit of a problem in Asia. We could jam North Korea again. We could um, coup Iran back. So what does it look like if we jam North Korea here? We go one ahead. I think given our ops, that's probably not good enough to justify use of the China card. Um, we can't flip Pakistan because they've overprotected it. And our ops don't really allow us to do a whole lot else in terms of very aggressive plays. Uh, so we could go one, two, three, four, since we know we've got Korean War. Um, they're no doubt going to be able to fill up Thailand though, but I think it's important that we do deny them South Korea this turn, especially since we got control of the Korean War for now. The other option is to event Korean War, but I don't really like that in circumstances where we can only get it then back to parity. The other option would be to place one into India. So to go instead of like, just give them Thailand and go one and then not quite take South Korea. The problem is our follow-up's pretty bad. Like we can flip Pakistan, which is okay, or we can take India, but we're not threatening Thailand at that point. So maybe the answer is to threaten them all. And I think there is one way we can do that by going one, two, three, four. If they have US Japan Pact or actually I think US Japan Pact or NATO, do we, we didn't have, uh, NATO was played on turn one. So, Yes, it is only US Japan Pact still out there. If they have US Japan Pact, they can take South Korea. But otherwise, I think that puts us in the best position. It does make South Korea a bit vulnerable, but even if they use US Japan Pact to, say, to take South Korea, then we get to take Thailand. Uh, and potentially India as well. Like we could put two in Thailand and three in India. So that seems pretty bad for them because then we're locked up at 3-3. So I don't think they can actually do that. This just allows us to threaten the most battlegrounds with the China card in hand. We are gonna run into some issues later this turn, potentially, depending on how things go with space, but we can space two cards. So being able to space these two um, and hold blockade, I think is probably going to be okay for us. And we can play this after the scoring. So they chose to take Thailand, which means that we can either flip Pakistan or take India. I think I'd prefer to take India. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Um, and then we will need to take Japan is the only issue in order to f even things up. The other option is to go one, two, three, four, five. And then, so how countries? One, two, three, four, five to one, two, three, four. So we could get up to six with two more ops beyond that. I mean, it's gonna be the other configuration though. So now we, with two ops, we can take Malaysia and Indonesia. 
and that takes us up to one, two, three, four, five, six countries to one, two, three, four, five, and they're going to take Laos as six. Yeah. They, they may threaten Malaysia as well, though, since they've got Vietnam revolts is the only thing I'm thinking. So maybe we do lock up Malaysia now just for country count. Yeah, I think that's probably right. One, two, three, four, five. We don't actually have any other available two up plays though. So this is a bit nasty because we can't take the gamble on Korean War and we also can't play Cambridge Five. That's very, very awkward. So what's our best bet then? Is it? Is that better? No, it's not better. Um, not this. Then they go into Lao, and then we still can't take South Korea. I think we just have to do it this way. Both our battlegrounds are vulnerable to wars, but we're only giving them back five VPs. And we can hopefully pick up a couple more in space and just move on from Asia at this point. Depending on what they do here, we'll probably just take the coup on Iran. Next action round. UN intervention for influence, okay. So it looks good. Uh, there's not much now that we can do. I think we probably pop the scoring card for five. I'm just checking to make sure. So yeah, we can't play Cambridge Five. We can't play any of those. All we've got is Truman Doctrine. We could take Indonesia, but I think we just pop it for now. Actually, are things gonna get worse? That's the question. Maybe we wanna take the coup before we do that. Do we tr Truman Doctrine coup Iran? Or do we take this, but then they get to probably coup, and they probably coup Panama. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think we do that. Although this is a little risky because we also don't get mill ops this turn. So it's a lot of VPs we're giving up. Yep, so using one up to coup Panama. So we've just got to hope that we're successful in space. Because we have to hold blockade, so we need to space. Actually, we can hold blockade and decal, can't we? So we're only going to play three more cards. Uh, so let's space this. Mm, yeah, I think that's better. Yep, so we got the VPs. That means we don't actually need to space Cambridge 5, so we've got some ops that we can now use for the remainder of the turn. We might go into Algeria and Lebanon here. Oh, interesting. Well, they're overprotected, so smart from them because otherwise I was probably going to put one in East Germany in our last action round. Um, instead, let us place into Jordan. Here, I think is right. The other option is to go into Indonesia or to go to Angola. But I think we need to solidify presence here. And Egypt is not the place to go. Although we could go Egypt, Jordan, and then we could go Libya, but then they get to go NASA and crew Libya, and that's pretty bad. I just think if we just stay out of this region until we know where NASA is next turn, that's probably the better way to go.
So they chose to play East European Unrest, which indicates... Sorry, they chose to play UN Intervention, which indicates to me that they probably had... Um, have CIA in hand. It's not certain, but it's more likely. Although they could have just got rid of CIA earlier in the turn. It was a little... We were putting a bit of pressure on them though in Asia, so they didn't really have a free action round to use a one-up card up until they did that. But yeah, they could have got, a, a, got away with pl playing CIA until they could Panama. So perhaps they don't have it. So holding decal and blockade here is one thing that's going reasonably well in our favour. Because it means we can hold them through the reshuffle. And if we do draw D-style, then we get to blockade away D-style and space decal next turn. Which is pretty huge. And we've got a rather large lead on the space race as well. Which does come with its risks, but fewer risks as the USA than as the USSR. Given the lack of grain sales in the mid-war deck working against us. Okay, so boxing us in in India, which is presenting us with some serious issues. Um, now, I don't think we go into Angola because we just don't want to give them random access. So I think we'll just take Indonesia, which is worth a VP. In the mid-war. So we did give up quite a bit by not cooing and popping Asia scoring. I think that was probably an error last turn. I was... Not feeling it at the time, but hey, we drew D-style. So as long as we don't get um, Red Scared here, we should be okay. Um, independent Reds is not doing anything. Special Relationships not doing anything. Foremost and Resolution isn't doing heaps. Truman Doctrine is still in the deck. But in terms of headlines, yeah, we're pretty light on. It's probably Blockade. And then if we get Red Scared, so be it. We can discard US Japan Mutual Defense Pact, but if we don't, we just get to get rid of this D style nice and early. And not have to spend a turn playing to make a one-op play. NASA. Alright. That I can deal with. Discard D style. There we go. So Middle East and Asia both looking a bit dicey. Both could be up for being scored again this turn. But they're giving us CIA. With Europe scoring defectors, so they're going to five-year plan away the Europe scoring unless we can interfere with that, which we can't. That's pretty frustrating for us. Comic-Con, De Gaulle, defectors, Olympic Games. Okay. So at least we know the Middle East is not going to be scored this turn, so we can go ahead and be a bit more aggressive. The question is, do we want to coup them out of Egypt? Or do we want to coup them out of Panama? I think we just want to get them out of Central America. I think it's better. So no luck, but that's okay. Could have also spread there, but we can't really spread into Angola because then they can just coup us. And I think other spread that we uh, spread options that we had available to us were not ideal either. Um, so we might event US Japan this turn just because putting it back in the deck is pretty bad. We'll see how we go for ops. But first we'll place influence into Angola and Al Ooh, Algeria because they do have De Gaulle so there's the opportunity for them to try and jam into Algeria. But if we can just make our way across Africa that'll be good for us. We can also move into Tunisia and force them to take Libya. We can also take Malaysia at some point this turn, which could be important for country count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That will give us a majority of countries in Asia, assuming that we can hold on to India. Uh, and assuming that we take Taiwan and Japan this turn. The other thing is, if we do that, and we do manage to hold on to India, 
um, that actually gives us, and we play Formosan, then that actually gives us domination <clears throat> in Asia. So that's not, not, not something to be trifled with. Uh, okay. Here's Costa Rica. So it's going to be interesting to see whether they do move elsewhere in South America, sorry, in Central America. But first up, I think let's take Malaysia. So in terms of ops, yeah, we can we can event Formosan and dominate Asia. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They can obviously flip Indonesia, so it's a bit annoying. But that means that we don't move into Zaire this turn or take South Africa. So the question is, is that where we want to be at? Do we want to prioritize causing that problem for them in Asia? I think taking Malaysia at the very least is okay. So they've got not heaps of ops left, do they? So they've got six from Comic Con and De Gaulle, and then they've got three on their last AR from Five Year Plan. So yeah, I mean they've got a few ops. They're going to give us a. Oh, they've used Comic Con, so they've got De Gaulle, Defectors, Olympic Games, and then Five Year Plan Europe scoring. So spacing defectors, all right. No dice for them there. So yeah, this is quite interesting. This Asia play is tempting me, but I think the safer play is to use the ops from Formosan instead. As much as I like the idea of using Taiwan to dominate, I think we can even things up by event a US Japan pact or just using it if we want to uh, for ops. And instead we can look to set up a better position in Southern Africa. Overprotecting Zaire and Angola even can be worth it. Just to prevent them being flipped by throwout plays, like forcing a coup if our opponent wants to get in there. And making them a little more unattractive for one-op coups as well, which is relevant often. Olympic Games and then they've got six more ops to come from De Gaulle and five-year plans so a pretty ops rich hand for our opponent <clears throat> we've got to make sure we don't get controlled here so we probably actually do need to take Saudi Arabia as awkward as it is because Middle East scoring could easily come out early in the mid-war before we're able to defray things and yes we can get Muslim revolution and that's a huge blowout but we can also get Arab Israeli ward if we take Israel so I don't love that <clears throat> I think I'd rather do this we'll leave US Japan in the deck we'll leave Japan hanging um, I think that's the right thing to do hmm, perhaps not if Asia scoring comes out next turn I'm going to be a little frustrated the other thing is I might consider taking Botswana on our final action round. So spacing decol in our next action round and then taking Botswana in our final action round just to really solidify this section of the board. <clears throat> so overprotecting Poland and then domination in Central America. Fair enough. Uh, still don't think we want to move into Mexico or Cuba. Fidel is not in the discard pile at the moment. So let's just space the decal. Well, we have certainly had the rolls on space. Even if our coup on Panama failing could now be a little bit of a problem for us in terms of VPs. So there goes that Europe scoring, sad face. Very powerful Soviet card in the early war, five year plan. It might be badged as a blue card, but it's definitely a red card. You'll rarely ever see the Soviets eventing it proactively, although I did lose to it as a hand size reducer in the late war. It is most often used for that reason, discarding that exact card, in fact, with Europe scoring being the likely avenue for US VP gains in the early war.
So the space race is giving us an advantage on the board at the moment. And the fact that we can still take Japan here is helpful. I think it will also be good to take Japan because we put Korean War back in the deck. Um, and it's we put it back last turn, so it could come at any point. Okay, interesting. So they're threatening Japan. Um, so perhaps that was a bit too aggressive for us to do that. But anyway, we'll try and cash in on Africa. So we can UN intervention away this lone gunman, which we'll certainly be pleased to do. We could try and raise DEFCON in the headline phase or lower DEFCON in the headline phase with how I learned. And that's probably going to be what we do. We could also take the China card back at some point this turn with Nixon and cause them some problems with John Paul. We could headline John Paul and threaten the John Paul Truman Doctrine, which is certainly strong. But with Europe scoring out of the way now, it's a little less immediate as a play, and it doesn't protect us quite so well in Africa, although it does protect us reasonably well and give us an opportunity to coup in the Middle East. So perhaps I prefer the John Paul play to the How I Learned play in some ways. How I Learned is also just a good source if we do manage to get the coup of uh, victory points for us on the final action round. We can send DEFCON up to five, and then that, if assuming we do get to take Poland this turn, that allows us to try and to threaten the rail lines in the headline phase slash AR1 next turn. So I'm presuming that they'll repair Poland and then we get a coup. I think that's the most likely outcome. For them to repair Poland, us to get to coup Libya or Iran, because we're not going to coup Panama under Latin American death squads. But yeah, this, this hand's got a few things going for it. So they chose to coup instead. All right, they get in on Zaire, but we get to... Question is, do we want to add influence in Poland first? I think it's probably... A... The thing is that it puts us in a similar position to just Truman Doctrining straight up in that if they have a four up, they get to just take it back. Um... Hmm. So I think the right answer is to play our four up first. And then... No, they so they can't take it back now. Okay. This is good, I think. Yeah, they get to flip Angola if they have a three up, but I think Poland's a reasonable threat for us to be presenting here. And if they don't flip Angola, which they didn't, we can, we will take back the China card at some point this turn, but we'll also overprotect Angola and just take Poland, I think. Or is that even better for us? Overprotecting our goal is better for us, but we don't want to take Poland. I think we'd prefer to event Truman Doctrine and just completely kick them out. Because it, it gains us a stronger stranglehold on Poland, I think. Although it does cost us another action round to do it. A little bit torn. So what are our other options? Our other options are overprotect Angola and say put one in Japan. I don't mind. Uh, hmm. I do want to threaten to take Japan, but our ops are just so light on for the rest of the turn that it's going to be pretty hard for us to fight for it, even if we take the China card off them, I think. Is there another problem that we can create for them with one up? I think moving into Saharan states would be okay. It gives us a reasonable target for a coup with lone gunmen. Um, yeah, maybe let's go one Angola, one Saharan states. Because we do, we've got the Truman Doctrine back up if they do want to commit some operations to Poland. 
And this way we're both protecting Angola and making a bit of an aggressive play as well. So they chose the coup. Hopefully they roll poorly. They did not roll poorly. Um, okay, that does make it a bit more challenging for us to take it back. Um, I don't really want to cool with Siren States. I think we'll just Truman and get that done. We want to invite them to play more ops into it, but I just don't think they were going to fight us for it at that point. We could have taken the risk of them having a four up and not put all four of the Marshall Plan ops in there. But I think holding on to Poland is probably going to pay for itself in the long term. So a blank South America scoring will be spacing socialist governments at some point. Let's try and get up to lunar orbit. Um, do we want to play Nixon plays the China card is the thing. We've got four more action rounds, so we're actually going to have to play how I learned this turn. So perhaps we actually do this and then if they don't play into Japan, we can play Nixon plays the China card just to take it. Not take China card, take Japan, that is. Um, okay, they're going to space. I mean, this is the other thing. They could have a reasonably bad hand. There are plenty of good US events out there. So we get to even up Asia, which does make quite a bit of a difference to how the board looks. Although India is obviously still sitting there pretty vulnerable. I think at this point, um, there are obviously a few things that we can do with our one op from Lone Gunman. So we've only got you know one op remaining for the rest of the turn. And it kind of depends on what they do. We get to see their headlines for at least the next few turns, hopefully, which will mean that we can try and control that first coup in the turn if we can, depending on what we draw and what they draw. But this position is looking a bit shaky for them. I often find as the US player, it can pay off to make those kind of aggressive plays in Europe. You have some powerful cards, like Truman Doctrine is a really powerful one, and if you can put the scare on them, it can, it can pay off. So they're giving us China to try and flip South Korea. Okay, well, it's probably gonna work because we're definitely gonna UN intervention this lone gunman. Um, and I don't think we're going to want to eat socialist governments, although we could, potentially. So if we triggered socialist governments, they can take one out of Italy, or two out of Italy, and one out of West Germany. And that's a bit annoying for us, but they also don't have any adjacency to Italy. They can brush war us too, so we need to be careful of that and start um, taking one of these, one or two of these Mediterranean countries. That is true. Um... I mean, Socialist Governments doesn't necessarily get a South Korea, even if we play all three into there. But I think it's it's worth enough VPs that we should probably fight for that and we can repair any, hopefully repair any damage in Europe later. So, yes, let us go ahead and do that. We miss out on the space roll this turn. A little annoying, but we did get back the China card, which shouldn't be discounted. I'm assuming they don't have Usuri as the reason that they played the China card there, because Usuri would be pretty good for us here. Okay, so taking out of UK is interesting, because now this lets us go one, two, three. Or play three into South Korea. I'm almost tempted to play three into South Korea, but <sighs> that's okay. Like they could have redrawn blockade here. Oh no, we played blockade, didn't we? So there's no blockade threat. Um, I think this is okay. We leave ourselves ahead in South Korea. If they've got Asia scoring, it's annoying. But I presume they would have played just jammed it earlier. Or do we play it on turn three? No. So it's, it is still in the deck. Um, I 
And if they want to get into an ops war in West Germany, they could. But I did get the vibe that they didn't have the greatest number of ops in hand. Well, they do still have three cards left, but they chose to play the China card. I feel like they've got a bit of a dicey hand. It's just my vibe. The space on puppet governments just made me feel like they might be sandbagging a couple of bad cards here. But we shall see. It may have just been a really good tempo play. But it was in the middle of us taking Japan. That was the thing. Okay, they've got a very good card. For the Kulin Angola, which we don't... It's annoying. But Africa is able to be fought for. So we'll place into West Germany. I think. Or do we place into South Korea? It's kind of interesting. I think we'd probably place into South Korea. Just to make it really hard for them to take it next turn. Um, and we are losing Milops VPs, but I think it's okay. Hmm. So we can headline grain sales, we can headline uh, Red Scare. We can headline duck and cover to kill them potentially, or grain cells to kill them, depending on what they headline. Um, Shay's going to be a bit annoying, but we can space Shay. Uh, and the rest of these cards we can probably deal with. We might have to do some cheeky relines off the back of Fidel and hope that they're successful. And Brezhnev Doctrine, we can play at the end of the turn. But yeah, we've certainly got a few reasonable headline options here. Two of which degrade DEFCON. Transport, welcome back. Um, no, not playing Magic the Gathering today. And I've even changed, as you, as you rightly point out, the title on the game. <laughs> so, all is good. Okay. So yeah, how are we feeling about this? Mm, we will bury you. Okay. So they are fighting hard for these VPs. So we can't... I think we probably just headline Red Scare then. At that point. And just say, okay, well, you can give up on your coup, but you can have a really low ops hand. That seems decent. And then we'll fight them that way. The other, the other option is... Yeah, I think that's good. And we'll, we might try and hold grain sales if we can for next turn. Let's go with that. So there are some potential blowouts. That is for sure on the VP front here. If they have Asia scoring, I'm going to be a little frustrated. If they have Central America scoring, also likewise. And I think we will play into Mexico this turn, potentially. Now that, particularly because ABM is out of the way and Hunter is still around, but they can Hunter into Mexico anyway if they want to. And I think we just want to even up these VPs here without the threat of ABM or a coup this turn. So assuming that the, they don't play into South Korea, then I think the likely play for us is going to be two in Mexico, one in South Korea. But we'll see where we end up. And remembering that they have, they're under red scare, so they've got a few possible issues in hand, particularly confronting us having the China card. Somewhat unfortunately, we have grain sales and duck and cover compared to them having it would be just a complete blowout. Slash they would be dead. Um, okay, well we lost our position in Poland to Warsaw, but we can... Hmm. 
I still think it's the same plan. I still think it's... One, two, three. Um, and then the other option is to put one into East Germany. Maybe that's better. We can just go into Mexico at any point in the turn unless they have the, the scoring card. Um, but I think at least threatening to, to take back Poland is good here. Uh, anywhere else that we can cause them a problem. South America's scored. We can finish off South Korea, but under Red Scare, I don't think they're going to force that issue. But they'll struggle to take Poland in one turn, uh, in one action round. Save for another four drop, but another four drop, another four op card. Um, they're also just not going to be able to fight us for South Korea under Red Scare. So we can go there, or we can just really jam it in East Germany. Now that... Uh, Warsaw Pact is out of the way. Hmm. I think that's okay. I think we go. Maybe we just play. We'll, we'll just play a two up. That's the answer. So we'll just play Cambridge Five. So there into East Germany and then save our duck and cover. That is definitely better because our last op from duck and cover was just not gonna do heaps. That's often the case, I find. Like, I'll go to play a three-up card and I'll go, or a four-up card, and I'll go, eh, this last op is really not great. Sometimes you can just downgrade and play the lower-up card. Sometimes that is the answer. Hmm. Asia scoring and Central America scoring are making me a little nervous. Two into Poland, all right. So I think we can go, like if they had a four up, they would have just taken it. You can go like this. So if they had Asia scoring, it's okay. The problem is we're a little light on playable ops for the rest, because we can't give them Shay. We can't give them Brezhnev Doctrine towards the, till towards the end of the turn. We want to event Indo-Pakistani war. We don't really want to play Willy Brandt. We can't play it aggressively. So I think perhaps we just have to accept that if they have Asia scoring, they have Asia scoring. And we can go one, two, three. We can just give them back China this turn as well, since the story's still out there. So let's just do that. Like, we've got to hope that they've got some bad stuff going on in their hands with being under Red Scare, having no China card. There are enough good US cards that hopefully they're struggling a little bit. Hand management. We do want to try and solve this problem in Africa and this problem in Central America this turn if we can. But if we can press the advantage in Europe, even up Asia, and I think take Mexico this turn, I think that will be a reasonable outcome. I think we'll try and hold Fidel until Central America is scored, if possible. I think that's probably more important than holding grain sales over to next turn. We could also just grain sales them. Yeah, that's... Yeah, okay. Let's just do that. Um, if we get something good, that's good. If we don't, then... Hmm. Interesting. Not peace at the expense of freedom, but both peace and freedom. Here in this hemisphere. Yeah, that would be unfortunate if it was just ones and scoring cards. So do we want to play colonial rear guards? I think we probably want to give it back to them. Because then they have to play it. And it doesn't actually do all that much for us, I don't think. So it lets us take Lao get Thailand to the point where we can flip it. Flipping Thailand's actually pretty big. And we can put one in Nigeria. Those are all decent things to do. And we don't really want them holding it. The only problem is that might def deny us the opportunity to IP war just because of how our other ops are looking. But I kind of like that. One, two, 
three. And do we put one in Indonesia or do we put one in like Cameroon, Isaiah? We don't really want to give them a good coup by going to Cameroon. Um, I think overprotecting Indonesia is okay, but Burma is actually probably better. Just forcing them to spend more ops is good to regain the countries. And it might get to the point where we can drag this kind of little battle late enough into the turn that we can just play this Brezhnev of Doctrine to clean up all the issues. On our last AR, <clears throat> that would be ideal. Okay. So, that leaves us with a bit of a quandary. I think we can afford to play Willy Brandt because it's not coming back anyway. Uh, Europe scoring is not coming back for a while, and we'll have the time to fix that up with Brezhnev Doctrine. So I think we can just take Nigeria, um, put another one in Poland. Do I want to take Lao? Um, I'm just thinking, are we going to play in... Um, the China card this turn. It'd be ideal not to have to. How many more hours do we have? Three. So we can go Space Shea, IP War, China card. Hold these two. No, we want to go Space Shea, IP War, Brezhnev Doctrine, rather. That's what we want to do. And then there's three ups from Brezhnev Doctrine. We need to use two to take Poland. Um, and probably one to take South Korea. We can also take Egypt. Yeah, I think it's looking good. If we can, if we can Egypt, even up Egypt, Sorry, even up the Middle East by taking Egypt and Israel over the next couple of turns, that will also be huge. So we have gotten back to Africa domination. We are just a little light on for, um, for ops this turn. The other option is to play Shea because that one coup on Botswana, it is annoying, but we by overprotecting Nigeria using those ops, we might actually be putting ourselves in a position where it's harder for them to dominate us in Africa, but it also does make it a lot harder for us to dominate them if they successfully coup Botswana. The coup could always fail. I did roll a, a one on Shea transport, as you know, yesterday, which was quite a blowout. And they have taken Mexico. So they beat us to the punch very annoyingly. So we're definitely not playing Fidel. That is 100% unplayable at this point. Um, they've still got two more plays, which I think are going to cause them some consternation. The question is, do we want to play a six plus IP war? Just largely to get the mill ops, but also to have like the one in six shot to flip Pakistan. We could also flip Pakistan using the China card. Um, which would give us domination in Asia once we finish off South Korea. I kind of don't mind that. We can then finish off with IP War and Brezhnev Doctrine influence. And say, yeah, you can have Central America, but we've now wrestled back control in Asia. That feels okay. Like if we go like that. Then we get to go South Korea, Poland. We have given them the China card though by doing that. <sighs> Just don't love it. Uh, we can, we've got enough. We've got enough um, influence to overprotect. Yeah. I think we can do it, knowing that Usuri is still out there. But they're not going to see it coming. Yeah, I'm so torn. Um, let's just finish Poland for now. Yeah, it's really tough. Really tough to know what's the best focus. I think flipping domination in Asia probably is good, but giving them the China card is really not. 
And if we can just keep Asia even at this point, I think it works out okay for us. Well, you know, I mean, it's annoying. Let's hope that their last play is not another good one for them. Yeah, so this purge has worked out a little annoyingly, but we're, we've also managed to use them eventing everything to press a bit of an advantage on the board. So I think it's I think it's still space Shay here. I don't think we want to give them Shay. And then we get to go Brezhnev Doctrine to take South Korea and repair West Germany, or take South Korea, one in West Germany, one in UK, or one in Nigeria. Yeah, let's face this. As if everyone... Europe looks so abandoned. Yeah, it does look pretty abandoned, doesn't it? I guess that's what happens when you get five you planned on turn three. Okay. Finally. Something good for us coming out of this turn. I think we just place... <clears throat> pardon me. One in Chile <clears throat> and one in Cuba... Nah, let's go two in South America, actually. One in Chile, one in go Brazil or Venezuela. We go one in Brazil. One in Chile, one in Brazil, and then we get to Brezhnev Doctrine. I think this is okay. We're holding on to China, which means that we have a chance to avoid playing Fidel before Central America scored. We could have put two in Mexico, but who knows? We might get the coup this turn. So one, do we want to fill up something in South America now? Probably not. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, we do. We want to go Venezuela and we want to go overprotect Nigeria, I think. Yep, let's go with that. <clears throat> so carrying the China card over into the next turn, Asia and Africa scoring. So we can potentially headline Africa here and ask not away some pretty powerful cards. We can also use the China card to flip Pakistan and then try and score Asia after that, depending on what they do. So quite a few options. We can also, if they headline brush war, we can headline NATO. Not that that's amazing, but at least it protects Italy. Um, headlining containment here, I don't think we is where we want to be. I think we're happy to chuck that back in the reshuffle. Cultural revolution either is something else that we can space or uh, play if we play the China card to take Pakistan, if that's how that works out. Yeah, I'm kind of not super keen to play the Ask Not here, firstly because I'd rather go back into the reshuffle in case we draw the a scoring card that we want to get rid of in the late war or something else. Um, so they're headlining one small step. I think we will take the opportunity and just headline Africa scoring and get those VPs in the bank. That sounds good. So if they take the coup, then we get Asia, because we get to take Pakistan. So they get Venezuela, but we get Asia. So I think that's a fair trade, considering that we got Venezuela from their OAS founded that they played last turn. That feels okay. This South African unrest is actually going to be pretty annoying for us, although Africa was just scored, so we do have time to fix all of that up. There's a good chance that they've got, you know, VOA or Suri or uh, some of those other problematic US cards, although we've now seen Grain Sales Colonial Rearguards, which we took off them last turn. Um, 
Okay. So they're demanding a play from us in West Germany, which we have. They could have Italy. Uh, sorry, they could have Rush Wolf, Italy. We need to think about that this turn really carefully. But I think we can afford to play Culture Revolution to sort that out later. Um, we're not going to play Muslim Revolution. We're lucky that we drew it, to be honest, because it was it's a pretty big blowout for us if they played it here. But in terms of... Um, yeah, so there's that Central America scoring. That was always going to be a problem for us. But at least now we get to score Asia for six as well. Um, I think we'll fix up Brazil first, though. Because they can take Burma, but we're still pretty far ahead on countries. Um... So let's play Culture Revolution, take Brazil, one, two, three. Or, no, it's more of a, it's more of a priority for me actually to sort out Europe. So place influence in Brazil and Spain, Portugal, just for the purposes of trying to defray that brush war. And we can, we've got Chile and Argentina, hopefully to ourselves. Um, yep. So with that, yeah, I don't think they're gonna be able to deny us the Asia domination here because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine countries. So they'd have to be able to flip two of that on battlegrounds or flip, and they've only got one, two, three, four countries. So they'd have to, yeah, they can't. If they flip Laos and take Burma, that's not enough. Or if they flip Indonesia and take Burma, that's not enough. They have to deny us, um, and they can't just deny us one battleground either. So I think chances are we're gonna pick up those six VPs this turn. It's just going to be an ongoing question of whether we want to ask not away these things. There are 17 cards left in the draw deck, so we're definitely going to have a uh, reshuffle next turn, and we're not going to trigger the reshuffle this turn, even if we ask not away a few cards. Which means that the only remaining scoring cards that we can draw is Southeast Asia scoring or Middle East scoring. I think we'd probably rather use the Ask Not VP, uh, Operations Points, I should say, to fill up the remaining um, battlegrounds in the Middle East this turn. That is That does mean that we have to hold one of South African Unrest or Fidel and play the other one. So we've got to play four more cards. Oh no, we can hold both because we play the China card this turn. Okay, that's not so bad. I mean, it's holding two bad cards into turn seven. But on turn seven, hopefully we get a clearer view of what's going on in terms of scoring once the other scoring cards come out. Okay, well, that's uh, <laughs> certainly annoying. At least we got two VPs. Um, yeah, I'm not sure we could have really hedged against that. Uh, okay, well, this is a bit of a priority because Middle East scoring is still hanging. South America, as I said, we can hopefully fix this up later in the turn, although let's put two in Argentina, I think, for now. Yeah. I also think maybe we want to take Greece this turn. I know it's being overcautious, but I feel like if we can sandbag Europe at a really good position, it makes it reasonably hard for us to lose. Um, and maybe taking Egypt there was unnecessary. Like they're not gonna fight us for that. Let's just dump this. Just holding scoring cards till late in the turn just makes me nervous no matter what's going on. No matter the fact that I can tell myself that they're not going to be able to deny us anything. I just don't want to, I don't want to take any risks. So we can fill up Israel with Ask Not. Okay, the overprotection makes a little more sense. Um, let's space this first. Nope. 
There's something about me and that uh, lunar orbit space, I just cannot get to it ever. So we really don't want them to catch up to us on space here. Seeing their headline next turn once more would be excellent. We very much want that to happen. I am tempted to move into Uruguay, but I think I'm going to move into Israel since we know it's going to be scored next turn. The other option is to hold Ask Not and just eat the South African unrest. Just because Ask Notting away Lone Gunman, if we redraw it or a scoring card next turn could be good. Hmm. Okay, yeah, I think we will do that now. Now that that has been played. So let's trigger this. Because now we only need to put one into Egypt to take it back. And then we get to have an even Middle East score next turn, assuming that they don't coup it off us. Yep, so we can go one, two. Other option there was obviously to coup Botswana and not lose Milops. Uh, but I think let's go with this. Okay, so they've got Southeast Asia scoring, they've got Middle East scoring. We still get to see their headline, which is handy. We don't have anything in particular that we want to ask not away. So we might have to eat these. It'll just again be a question of whether holding them over or playing them is going to be worse for us. This could be a headline nuclear subs turn where we say, okay, we've established a reasonably good level of control in um, Asia and Europe, and now we can use nuclear subs to really hammer the mid-war regions. So that is a, a pretty good option for us here. Okay. Korean War, eh? Hmm. So we can headline Isuri to take back the China card, but so, my I'm not sure about that. We can headline Camp David Accords to give ourselves the chance to get a cheeky domination in the Middle East. Or we can headline nuclear subs and just go nuts in the mid-war, which I think is probably the way to go with this hand, because it defray some of the issues with Allende Liberation Theology and Fidel if we can be successful. And whilst the event, other events that we, the other blue events that we have in our hand are good, using them to coup is also just not bad. Part One of the problems with that strategy is that Zaya and Angola are overprotected, but if we get to coup one, two, three, four with a four, three, three, and maybe a two, maybe we use us not, but I think we still hold that. Um, I think it's okay. So hopefully this is a fail. That is big for us. Sorry, I missed that chat there, Transport. Yeah, drawing the lone gunman after you've just asked nodded. It feels pretty miserable, particularly when you've just played the China card, so yeah. Since we don't know where Lone Gunman is, if they play Lone Gunman this turn, then we'll feel safe. Because it'll be gone forever, but presum presumably they would have um, they would have headlined it. Because we had it earlier, we you and interventioned it on an earlier turn. Ah, dim rolls, dim rolls. We're gonna coup here first. Not what we want, but better than a one. <laughs> so was there no reshuffle there? No, there's still two cards in the draw deck. Okay, didn't even notice that. That is a good thing to pay attention to. 
So they have got the brush war for Italy. And that's a failure too, thankfully. I'm glad I am glad that we sandbagged a little bit there to play around the brush war, and I'm also very glad that it failed nonetheless. Um I do think we want to coup Venezuela. Or do we want to coup do we want to just like go nuts in Africa? Is that better? No, I think it's better to go here. All right, well, coups are not our friends, it seems. Which makes our alliance for progress worse, but we were unlikely to event it anyway. At least they're failing on the space race too. That is some solace that we can take from all this. This is pretty awkward because it makes just these other, these cards just so much worse now that we've made no inroads with our two coups into, into South America. Um, I think we'll coup. This is out of or will we? To the earth. We could event Camp David Accords, force them to play their Middle East scoring, which, yeah, they definitely have. Um, well, unless it's one of these last two cards. So we could play Camp David Accords. If they don't play Middle East scoring, we take Israel. Um, but yeah, boy, these. Central America is looking like it's going to do a bit of a job on us here. Hmm. So they definitely haven't got Lone Gunman this turn, but yeah, it obviously can come back at some point later. Um, kind of tempted to ask not these cards away, but yeah, I just really don't want to die. All right, let's play... I don't think we're going to coup again. I think we're just going to do this and try and get ahead of Allende and keep South America even. I think with two failed coups there's just we can't just keep throwing good money after bad so to speak. They have had two failed wars as well this turn though so we can't be too unhappy with how things have panned out. Assuming that we can remain in a strong position in Europe and Asia, which is a big assumption to make, but assuming that we can, um, things do look okay for us in final scoring, but these are going to present some somewhat of an issue. Okay, so at least we pick up one there. Interesting they didn't want to dedicate the VP to Burma. They might have Middle East as well, which does kind of make me want to um, event Camp David Accords, just also in general. It's a good event. Um, hmm. But I think putting two in Chile and then being able to event Allende and retake Chile is probably better. So it goes 2-4 and then we take it again with Allende. Yeah, I think that's probably too important. They can go ahead and score the Middle East here and they got we didn't get a lot out of our shuttle diplomacy but it did get us three VPs I guess at that point so it's not too bad they do have the China card but Usuri is coming back and did we event Nixon? I can't recall, let's have a look I think we just played it for ops yes yeah, so there's a lot of blue events coming back not a lot of red events removed either, but um, certainly more good blue events coming back. Yeah, using Ask Not now does force a turn 7 reshuffle. Because um, there are only two cards left in the deck. So they've chosen to take Israel. Okay, I think there's just not much that we can do about that. Like, they've given us China to do it, which opens them up to all sorts of issues in the late war in terms of DEFCON. So, you know, I, I'm not sure that those three VPs there are worth it. But they've made that election. We did play Culture Revolution too, didn't we, and remove it? I think, yeah, we played it for the bad mood. So both Nixon and um, Usuri are still floating um, 
cool. So now we've got two more ARs. So we know that those last two cards aren't scoring cards. What are they? And is it worse for us to play this Liberation Theology and this Fidel? And to see those two random cards. I think now that we've got the China card, I am a little more inclined to get rid of... to just use us not to get rid of these cards. Although obviously they do get reshuffled. So we can't draw Lone Gunman because it's in the discard pile, right? Yeah. Can't draw Lone Gunman. There's no scoring cards. Yeah, I think we just do it. I think th those events are just super bad for us. We should have done it last, like, two rounds ago if we were going to do it, but can afford to do it. Cool. So we can space Quagmire here. Get rid of that. Which is certainly better. I think like if they drew Quagmire next turn, that could have been reasonably bad for us. And we haven't given them such a strong position in Central America that there's no hope for us to come back, which is kind of what would have happened if we'd played Fidel and um, the Liberation Theology there, I think. So, so we're going to space Quagmire. I think holding Romanian over to next turn is not too much of a problem. It's a lob card, but they've only got one country in Europe currently. And we still get to see the headline, quite importantly. And hopefully we get to finally bank these three VPs from Lunar Robert. That would be ideal. So I think our third attempt at it. So flipping, we didn't flip a um, another one of the battlegrounds in Africa this turn, which does kind of suck since we used nuclear subs to basically no effect. We did, I mean, we kicked them out of Argentina, which meant that we stabilized South America a little bit. But it, when I first looked at the hand, I was like, we can make some positive inroads here in the mid-war regions with nuclear subs followed up by four, three, three, two coups. Uh, yeah. Suez to fight us in Poland. Okay. Well, that's fair. We got the three, which is good. And we got grain cells again. We've got a pretty dicey hand, which would have been lovely to have Ask Not in, but you know, it's not a particularly dangerous hand. And <clears throat> assuming that they don't headline the reformer, Glasnost can actually do us a solid. That's a kind of ABM treaty that costs us two VPs. Marine barracks bombing, okay. Well, we'll go ahead and headline grain sales and try and take two coups this turn if we can. Hmm. Well, kind of like, kind of could just play that to be honest. But I don't really want to give them a coup. Yeah, I think it's... That's a really tough one. <laughs> I think it's better. So the three options are coup with Grain Sales to Soviets and return Solidarity. Event the Solidarity, which gives them a coup. Or coup with Solidarity, which means they don't have Solidarity in hand. 
which reduces the hand size and could potentially kill them on DEFCON. And they could ju just space the solidarity if they don't have any DEFCON suicide cards. So I'm a bit... They're all interesting options. I kind of think we probably coup with solidarity. But then if they have a four up, it's pretty bad for us. And what's our best coup? Like our best coup is not great. So we're doing it for the mill ops and to deny them a coup. Their best coup is Nigeria, which is actually pretty good for them. But we can then coup back with Glasnost. So I think maybe cutting the hand size and taking back Poland is better. Yeah, let's do that. Just because I think we've still got a good shot at... Like, attacking hand size is good, so I think, <clears throat> in general, taking the solidarity is better than returning it. Um... But in terms of the coup versus the event, I just, yeah, I'm not sure that our coups on Battleground Countries here with a two-op card were particularly strong. Okay. So they give us two VPs, we give them two VPs back with Glasnost. And we can space Shay and then try and discard one of these crappy cards. I think that works out okay for us. I think we also still coup Nigeria here with the Glasnost, because it denies them domination for sure in a region. So let's go do that. Cool. Reasonably happy with how that worked out. We got to solidify Poland, keep their hand size attacked, and neutralize Africa. The issue for us now is still Central America, as it has always been. We can invent this shuttle diplomacy, which is going to help us if there's another Middle East scoring. Assuming that we get to retake Egypt this turn, that is. Um, but in the absence of another Middle East scoring, it's kind of mediocre. Okay. Well, now we can coup with Arab-Israeli war, I think. Uh, or do we put one in Ivory Coast? Or do we coup with something else? We just coup with one small step. That's fine. Then we don't have to stress too much about Arab-Israeli war. We'll just coup with this. Cool. Which is actually handy because it gives us domination. We also need to hurry up. I need to stop thinking so much and we'll just play through this turn a little bit quicker. I won't explain everything because we are running a little short on time. Okay. Both strong plays. Uh, nothing really hanging for us as such, I don't think that makes me not want to play Shay. I mean, we could play Shuttle Diplomacy into Cuba. We do get blown out by Fidel, and it makes Ortega a DEFCON suicide card, so I'm not super keen to do that. Um, little space there. That's good. We get to discard a card at the end of the turn. Space Bear Trap. They succeed so we don't see the headline for the next two turns. A bit annoying. Um, I might just take Burma here to defray the Indo-Pakistani war threat a little bit. Well, it's pretty... that's not the best. Maybe I should flip Lebanon. And then Arab-Israeli war. Yeah, that seems better. It's a nice little domination. And we've got these three plays for the rest of the turn.
Could have also jammed Mexico there, or jammed Panama, or played into Uruguay. All of those would have been serviceable plays, I think. Also, I think I probably want to take Greece with this Arab-Israeli war influence. I also want to overprotect West Germany. Um, and we don't really need to overprotect Pakistan because we get to go last. And we've got the China card. Okay, well, we'll just coup Nicaragua now. Hopefully not a one. Actually, we'll coup with Arab Israeli war, so that we definitely kick them out. Good. Also good. That was also worth a VP for us. Ah, oh, they had the Middle East scoring card. There you go. Uh, well, we'll put one into Greece. And then another one into Greece with Summit and discard de Gaulle. Like, even though we could event de Gaulle potentially, and it wouldn't be too deadly for us, I just don't want to give them that influence in France. Like, it gives them adjacency to Italy, gives them opportunities to grief us in the UK potentially at some point. I mean, I know they're pretty much ignoring Europe at this point, but I'd rather just play the summit and play it a bit safer here. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. And I like to think that they must have some some more bad cards in hand. They did have to space bear trap. But we we attacked their hand size, so hopefully this last card's a problem for them. Some kind of crisis they have to manage. Yeah. <laughs> How do they fail invading themselves? Asked Transport. Well, yeah, it's a good question. I guess the answer is that they failed to kick out our one remaining agent in Israel, or our remaining US loyal cell. So they still control it, but it wasn't a complete success because they didn't wipe us out. So with the Middle East scored, we've got Central America outstanding, but as discussed, I'm reluctant to move into Cuba. Okay. Interesting. Giving us no is totally not a problem for them, um, and they can now realign us here. I think we'll just, rather than taking Greece, we might take a bit of a punt and just coup Guatemala. Um... No, I can do that next turn. I can take Greece next turn, and they may not even draw brush war, but yeah. I'm gonna feel so miserable if they brush war us in Italy. No, I think the coup on Guatemala is better because it also denies them. Ah, it's annoying. I discard this. It denies them a few other things, so it's good. Africa scoring may be our headline. Oh, we can aims away Africa scoring. That's not too bad. We can also aims away Latin American death, debt crisis, or we can use it to get rid of Pashing. If we do those two things, discarding two cards, then we've only got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plays. So we'd need to play the China card. So we've got to think about that. We could also play Africa scoring and um, get rid of aims. Oh, we don't see the headline anymore. Duh. Uh, well, I think we probably could headline Colonial Rearguards here. 
Iran Iraq War is not great. And Camp David Accords is fine, but it's already been scored. Yeah, let's do Colonial Rear Guards, especially since we've got Africa scoring. Okay. So. Uh, one. Two. Um, three, four, <clears throat> I think is the way to go. We've always got the option to aim the way this Africa scoring if we want. Getting them, scoring 10 points for them here is not going to be ideal though. So we do have to be careful of that. Although once, if they have Central America scoring, there's really not many other VP sources for them on the board. Um, and we have the opportunity to space for four points this turn. Although it's only, obviously only a 50-50. Yeah, this is the problem with us not eventing US-Japan Pact earlier. Yeah. Not great. But now we do get to play test ban and dominate Africa. So I kind of like that. Because those points will be handy, even if we get dominated. And I mean, they've gone into Haiti here, so we can coup Haiti with like independent reds or around Iraq war really. Um, Okay. Annoying. Uh, and I think we can... So we can't aims. We can pushing. But that's pretty annoying. And it also gives them a VP. So I think let's independent reds. We're still dominating now. Um, they could take back Botswana. But yeah. Yeah, that was pretty annoying. Decal's a powerful card. Hmm. And yeah, they take back Botswana. Fair enough. Well, I think we'll just score Africa for plus one here. And they could spend time realigning us, but I think we're actually just gonna coup Haiti, try coup Haiti, try coup Guatemala, and then try get some realigns happening. And we'll space pushing, I think, and maybe aims away debt crisis. That sounds good. So coup, 80. Yeah, it's frustrating. It means they get a coup. Today I say as long as this gate is closed. And we do have to RA because we've only got five minutes here. All right. I mean, it's not obviously amazing, but in some ways it's good. Um, we get to sort out Greece. <laughs> we can also take Canada potentially here for the no rad bonus. Uh, yeah, I think we might do that, to be honest, with Ames. So might just do the ray lines now on Cuba. And could realign them in Saharan states. Um, yeah, I think that's our best bet. Okay. So in some ways losing that VP from Camp David Accords is a bit annoying, but uh, Europe scoring is handy. Cool. Well, we just got to play against time now. So let's just space. 
Sweet. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Cool. That was coming. And now we will place in Canada. And we will place one in Thailand, I think. Uh, Venezuela. Let's see if I can take that back. All right, three and a half minutes. Yeah, Central America scoring is annoying, but we can headline Voice of America. That sounds good. Ugh. <laughs> Gross. Okay. Uh, well, I guess we go... That'll do. Actually, no. Now, I know they get to coup Panama here um, and then repair Venezuela, but I think, yeah, Hunter was just a good draw for them. And if we can get this scoring away for anything less than control, I think it's going to be good. Yeah, okay. Well, let's just cop it for four, I think. Actually, we can just take Panama here, but then we give up Cuba. Uh, you take Cuba and put one in Panama. Or we can just Star Wars Voice of America. Yep. Alright, we've got a coup, so let's coup... Hunter, or we can grain sales them. Um, let's play grain sales. Cool. Well, I guess we've got a coup with that. Yeah, we could probably have held that Star Wars for later in the turn, couldn't we? Um, if we're going to start to two, yes. Failure. Right, not what we want. Let's do that, and hope they don't have a four up. Yeah, that was kind of a bit of a punt. I'm feeling the pressure of time, to be honest. Let's do this. All right, I'm not going to talk much while we finish this off. Okay. 
four. Yeah, there were many brutal plays I could have done with Star Wars. I just didn't have the um, mental capacity to think them through in the time that I had available. Could have just waited until... Like, the best thing to do would have been not play Star Wars <clears throat> until AR7 and just Star Wars Voice of America, AR7. <clears throat> That's definitely the best way to go. Also playing the other high ops card, i.e. Um, the China card early was a mistake for sure, because now we've deprived ourselves of the opportunity to go causing them issues in terms of their other dominations, but anyway. Okay. Well... So now we just get to hopefully score Central America and then use Missile Envy to deny them South America control. That's probably the best we can do now. Oh, assault, and, assault negotiations. Rip. Okay. Yeah, so it'd be interesting to see what they do here. Because we can still, I think no matter what they do with the Junta, we can deny them control, hopefully, of South America, which should be enough. Now getting 6, 10. We're getting 14 at the moment, 15, but I think that'll change. Um, and then they're getting another 8. So they're getting 18 to our, like, 15. So it's going to be close. They've got the China card. Depends if they can really flip a lot in Central America um, or finalise control but I don't think in one action round they can finalize control in which case can we stop them dominating us elsewhere we can't break South Africa so I think we're just going to do this take that back Oh, got there with two seconds on the board. <laughs> two seconds and two victory points. So, thank you for watching. <laughs> that was an incredibly stressful match. What was your transport? What was your thought? Um, share it with us. Before I shut off the video, I'm also recording for YouTube, so. Two last ARs, VOA, advanced south oil. Yeah, VOA, AR7. Yeah, Star Wars. VOA, AR8. Yeah. That would certainly have been brutal. I, and I had the hand for it. I think the only thing that I'd say about that is that it probably would have meant that I um, gave up Central America, both in terms of the, that initial score, but also, I mean, maybe the, the last two VOA plays you hope would have allowed me to defray things, but could have got, could have got a bit ugly in the middle there. But anyway, we just got there in the end, and um, that is certainly a good suggestion. And I think in general, if you make it to turn 10 as the US and you've got VOA in hand, let alone double VOA with Star Wars, you should probably use them at the end of the turn. But uh, yeah, that was what it was. And 
we just managed to hold on for the win. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time. Cheers.